What is up guys? Welcome back for another Goodbye Auras Tournament Showcase or GOT Showcase as we title it. Uh, today we're using our good friend Rob's team and uh, we've gone over Rob's team in the power rankings. Uh, I just want to go over it real quick. Uh, the Pokemon we are leaving behind is Hitmonchan. It is a rapid spinner but Rob has made a really cool spike stacking team with uh, both Aerodactyl and Azelf as possible stealth rockers uh, coupled with a an insane wall breaking core of Kirin Black and uh, Ursaring, as well as uh, a spin blocker in Jellicent, and uh, you have your spike stacker right here, which is Klefki, and Hitmonchan if he wants to spin. So it's a very, very offensive team uh, with a good spike stacking core. I really, really like this team. That's why I placed it so high on the power rankings. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, definitely go watch that video. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Before I start, actually, I just want to tell you, tell you guys how excited I am to be recording right now. Uh, for two reasons. One, we're recording in 1080p. I haven't done that before. I'm going to be zooming in on the screen, uh, and uh, it's going to come out a lot better. And the second reason is because I got a new PC, uh, which means a few things, actually. One, this video is going to take absolutely no time to render. Two, uh, the quality, because of the graphics card that I have, is uh, a lot better. Probably you guys are noticing. And uh, finally, you'll notice even more when we get into a battle, but finally, uh, also the fact that I can now calc on a separate screen. This means that I can do this, grab this team, move it over to my second screen, you guys can't even see it right now, and we're just importing uh, our sets, and there we go. So you guys don't have to watch me calc, I can do that on my own now, you can stay in the battle, and uh, I'll let you know what the calc says. So I mess that up a lot with the uh, with the exact amounts, uh, like the way I say them. But anyway, let's get into a game. Let's find one right away. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long on my first recording with my new PC. Uh, if you guys have not checked me out on Twitch yet, actually I just started streaming thanks to having this PC. Uh, I did do a uh, stream two days ago uh, during the evening, right after I got this uh, this computer, and uh, it went okay. Not too many viewers, but if you want to go check me out, go follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description now, coupled with both my Facebook and my Twitter, as well as the button to subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you do enjoy this video at the end, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get right into this game. So right away, I see that my opponent is extremely weak to Kieran Black. I'm going to have to watch out for the Metacham because it can be a, a pretty big issue, especially if it's a Thunder Punch variant. Uh, I like Azelf as a lead, uh, but the fake out is just so imminent. Um, let's let's lead off with Azelf though. Anyway, it should be fine. As my opponent decides to lead off with Landorus, this means that I get up rocks right here. Uh, I can also taunt. This does look like a potential rocker, but he also has the Heatran. So I'm just going to go for my rocks. He goes for the knockoff. Uh, brings us almost down to Sash, and we are able to get up our rocks right there. I'm assuming he's just going to click knockoff again, so what I'm actually going to do is uh, go hard out into Klefki right here and uh, we're gonna start spike stacking this man and we still have our spin blocker alive so this should be absolutely fine uh, let's go for the spike as I'm assuming either Heatran or Tentacruel are gonna come in here Metacham can also make a, an appearance but I doubt that thing would want to get Thunder Waved uh, and I know that this Landorus is Scarf because of course it outsped my Azelf so get up the first layer of spikes right there uh, we'll see what he wants to do on my switch to Jellicent but now every time this Tentacruel comes in it's taking more and more damage so he's just gonna go for a Scald of course we are immune to that and uh, now what I can do is I can throw out a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, as he goes for the knockoff, that's not going to do much damage at all. We do lose our leftovers in the process, but Tentacruel now being burned is phenomenal. And I can actually just throw out another Wisp here because this Tentacruel cannot do anything but click knockoff. And now it's going to be doing roughly about 7 to 8%. So, nothing whatsoever. So let's see, uh, let's see what his uh, switch here is. I would expect a Moongus to come in. Uh, it doesn't matter because as long as Jellison is alive, he never gets to spin. And I'm getting insane residual damage off on pretty much everything, except for the Landorus. Uh, everything else is taking a nice, clean amount of damage. And I'm expecting Scarf Kirim to come in big at the end and just uh, clean up this game. Potentially with Ice Beam, I do have to get rid of the Heatran first, but it's fine. He does go for a Toxic Spike, that's absolutely fine. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is just throw out a Scald, expecting him to... Uh, okay, well, he, I guess he stays in. Alright, that's fine. He gets up two layers of Toxic Spikes. Most of my team is off the ground or uh, is not affected by Toxic Spikes anyway. Like, uh, Ursaring doesn't care because it's Toxic Orb anyway, so it's, he just gives me the free... Uh, I don't have to protect on the first turn, basically, which is awesome. Uh, as now, I'm just going to throw out another Scald right here. We'll see what he wants to do. Uh, the spike stacking, uh, it should work out in the end. We'll see he goes into uh, Sylveon right here. Hopefully we can get a burn. If we don't, it's fine. Uh, we do not score the burn, but that's okay. 
as this Sylveon is about to get taunted, we are faster than base one, uh, well, base 50s or base 60s, I think, that hit 156. We have a little bit of speed investment to make sure that we outspeed those and taunt them. And uh, if we get off a taunt on this Sylveon, then it's pretty much, uh, it's forced to switch out, is basically what I'm saying. So that's not too bad. We also lost our item, which actually helps us against Landorus because we can recover stall it. He's going to go for the protect on my taunt. Uh, I don't care. I'm going to go for taunt anyway. And uh, we know that we're faster than the Sylveon, so he might be tempted to switch out. Uh, no matter what he goes into, though, I'm definitely keeping this Jellicent alive. I am not allowing him to spin on me, not even once. So we'll see what my opponent chooses to do. We're going to try to keep it to two battles, uh, definitely. He's going to go for the Hyper Voice. That's not going to do much at all. We are going to get this Taunt off, forcing him into attacking us. He's actually quite speedy because he outsped us there. Uh, we're going to go for the Recover. Uh, if he decides to Hyper Voice again, that's absolutely fine. I'm assuming this... Um, this Sylveon is a little bit more offensive because of that speed. It's a little bit weird that he's uh, he's past my speed. Uh, he does not get the high uh, or the uh, crit rather, so we are able to uh, to heal up right there. And what I'm actually going to do is go hard out into Klefki, I believe, uh, is my play. Uh, I want to keep this Jellicent alive. I, sh I should actually just recover one more time. That's fine. Uh, as he is going to do what? Uh, is he still taunted this turn? Yes, he is. Okay, cool. So we will go for the. Uh, how much is it doing? 32%? I'm not comfortable with that damage. We're going to switch out into Klefki. This is fine. Uh, Tentacruel takes uh, crazy damage every time it comes in now uh, because it is burned. It's also uh, coming in on spikes and rocks. So as long as Jellicent is alive and enough for the Tentacruel to go down, we should be fine. Klefki is going to take a Hyper Voice. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the taunt ends as we will go for another layer of spikes right here. Uh, as the Sylveon decides to stay in and go for Heal Bell. That's absolutely fine. We're going to go for a Thunder Wave. Uh, that way, if his Tentacruel comes in, at least it's paralyzed, so it's always slower than Jellicent, uh, which is nice. We don't have Heal Bell, so the Toxic Damage is going to start wearing Jellicent down, but as long as I can always get off a Recover every time the Tentacruel comes in, we should be fine. As my opponent's actually going to pull out a Switch into Heatran this time around, it's on a Balloon. We do get off the Thunder Wave. Uh, I don't really want to play around with this thing in here. Um, Aerodactyl might be my play, because it doesn't get affected by the... Uh, by the toxic spikes it's kind of obvious but i did still want to keep his elf around uh, i feel like he's just going to get up rocks at this point so maybe just get up my last layer of spikes right here i think might be the play and yeah no we'll go to aerodactyl before the rocks go up i think that's the better play yeah because he doesn't have a good switch into this at all uh and i'm gonna go for uh for the stone edge straight away like, his Lando takes a lot from this, regardless, so. Uh, we are going to get off the Stone Edge right there. It's going to do a nice 44%, pop the Balloon. He's going to go for Flash Cannon. He actually has it. Wow, okay. Uh, we didn't bring our uh, Rapid Spinner, unfortunately, so Azelf is now uh, Death Fodder. But as long as I can keep Kirim healthy and don't bring it in too early, I should be fine. So... Let's go out into Ursaring, because a close combat from this range uh, should be able to take it out. Even a Facade, actually. Uh, I have 591 attack. So we're just going to go for the Facade right here. Hopefully he switches in Lando. That would be awesome. Thinking I'm either going to go for an Earthquake or a close combat. But I'm actually going to go for the Facade right here. Uh, Tentacruel also would be cool. Uh, but he's going to stay in with his Heatran. That's absolutely fine. We're able to knock that thing out with a Facade. I'm assuming the Tentacruel is going to come. I want to come in. No, Sylveon's actually coming in. Okay. Um, this is fine. I am worried that he's faster than me, though. So I'm just going to go hard into Klefki again. This is absolutely uh, my perfect switch every time. He goes for Protect. I, w I was assuming that was also a possibility that he was just trying to Toxic Stall me, but that's cool. Uh, we're going to go for the Spikes right here once again. Get a little bit more residual damage on the Metacham when it comes in, on the Amoongus. Uh, the Amoongus is going to be the biggest problem to deal with, I feel, because otherwise I could just spam... Uh, well, this Sylveon is also an issue because I would be able to spam uh, Outrage otherwise if this thing wasn't alive. But it's still here, unfortunately, so something that we have to deal with. Good thing is that every time Ursaring comes in on something that's uh, slower than it, being either possibly this Sylveon or the Amoongus, it gets a kill. So Tentacruel is going to come in. I'm just going to go for the spikes right here. He does get a little bit of recovery, but it doesn't matter. Every time I go into Jellicent, every single time. And uh, he's going to go for the knockoff. That's going to do a little bit of damage. Not a big deal. We can easily just go for the recover right here. He goes for a toxic spike for no reason. He's just trying to knock me out to uh, toxic poison. Uh, we're going to go for the will-o-wisp this turn. As uh, 
I don't know why he didn't knock off, though. That doesn't make much sense. Like, why wouldn't you just attack? We are going to burn this Tentacruel. That's awesome. And then what we can do is we can recover. And on the following turn, I'm going to switch out into a Zelf to sack it because it's not useful anymore. Uh, and I'm going to bring back in Jellicent just to make sure that this Tentacruel never gets off its Rapid Spin. So, hopefully we can pull this out. I really wish I was Quick Feet right about now on, uh, on Ursaring. It would have been very nice right here, but uh, this is fine. If the uh, Landorus is adamant and not jolly, our Kirim will be able to outspeed it and Ice Beam it, so that's very nice. I'm going to sack off a Zelf right here as my opponent chooses to go for the uh, knockoff again on that turn. And now we're going to go back into Jellicent, and we're going to go down with Jellicent. So uh, let's go for the Recover. I'm assuming he's just going to click Knockoff. This Tentacruel is pretty much useless at this point. It does die to Spikes plus uh, Stealth Rocks. Uh, the only way he would potentially be able to heal it up is with uh, Sylveon Wish Passing into it. Actually, not even. Uh, Sylveon's going to come in here. I'm just going to go for the Recover. Uh, I could totally see a Wish coming off here. But I think Klefki is my best play regardless. Let's see what he does. He goes for the Protect. All right, cool. And we will go for the Flash Cannon on this turn. And uh, get off some nice damage. 30%. Awesome. He goes for the Wish. That's fine. As I'm assuming either uh, Lando or... Well, if he switches out, then the Sylveon dies. So I think he has to go for Protect. So let's just go for another Flash Cannon. He does go for Protect. That's absolutely fine. As now what we're going to do is we're going to Thunder Wave this thing. Uh, and keep it uh, paralyzed. He does have Heal Bell, but it's fine. So he's Wish, Heal Bell, Hyper Voice, Protect. Okay, so the standard Sylveon uh, set, but he is running some speed. Which is a little bit weird to me. Does get fully paralyzed that turn. We don't have our leftovers anymore, which is a little bit annoying. But we're only taking 6% every time we switch in, so it's fine. Get a nice Flash Cannon off right there. He's going to go for the Heal Bell. That's cool. We are going to go for a Thunder Wave if he protects. That's also fine. Uh, we just need to paralyze this thing enough times, and then we should be good to go. So... Um, I have to predict the turn that he goes for the Protect and switch out into Ursaring, I think. Well, no, because he can just Protect again on the following turn. If I'm able to get rid of this thing, that would be amazing. Uh, I'm just going to keep clicking Thunder Wave because I don't lose anything by clicking Thunder Wave. Uh, because as soon as this Sylveon switches out, it puts itself very, very low and can no longer switch into attacks. Uh, except maybe Jealous and Scald. So, Get off another T-Wave right there. He does go for another Wish. That's absolutely fine. Once again, we're just going to go for a Flash Cannon right here as he's going to switch out into Tentacruel, not realizing that it goes down to Spikes plus Rocks. So that is a Wish Wasted right there. And I'm assuming Landorus or Metacham is actually going to come in here uh, and take a lot of damage. And I am not even playing games. I am just going to Thunder Wave this thing right here, right now. He's going to go for the Fake Out. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and we're going to try to T-Wave. If he switches out into uh, Sylveon, that's that's cool. It's going to take some more damage from coming in. Uh, it's sitting at 50% when it switches in, so it's quite a long battle. But uh, I guess that's just the nature of Rob's team. That's, that's what we get. All right, so it's looking like uh, if I paralyze this... Actually, even if I don't paralyze this, Kirim can win with Ice Beam now. Uh, I just need a little bit more damage off on the Sylveon, and then it's pretty much game over from that point on. Um, the only way he would be able to bring it back is with Landorus, uh, being able to knock me out with, uh, with the, um, what, what am I trying to say? With the Stone Edge, if he is jolly, if he's faster. So, Metacham is now slower than me, uh, than my Ursaring. So, what I can do is to go straight into it, right here. He is slower, and we will just click Facade. If he has Bullet Punch and he wants to go for it, that's absolutely fine. We're not allowing the Sylveon to come in basically, is what we're doing. Landorus is going to come in on a Guts Facade and take 88% and go straight down. So that means that now there is no threat of anything outspeeding our Kirim. Uh, and if he goes into Metacham, I will switch directly back out into Jellicent. No word of a lie, that is definitely my play every single time. And uh, I will click Taunt, because if Sylveon comes in, I don't want it wish passing, so... Sylveon's actually going to come in right now, uh, as if he gets fully paralyzed, then this thing is gone. Uh, he goes for Protect, that's fine, because the next facade is still going to take him out. He has to land a double Protect through Paralysis, basically. Uh, and Scarf Kirim can just win this game uh, at this point if he lets this thing go down. I just click Ice Beam twice, and that is game over. Uh, I just want to see, why do I have a Calc open here? I'm not supposed to have that. Alright, let's see. Uh, I'm going to Calc on the side over here uh, for Kirim Black. Uh, our custom set. 
Uh, Kirim Black. He lets his Sylveon go down, so Kirim should be able to win this game. Choice Scarf versus uh, Metacham. I just want to see what kind of damage I'm doing to it with Ice Beam. 49 to 50, so yes, it does go down from this range. Uh, and he can only switch back in on rocks once, so... Uh, we will just switch out into Jellicent here. I will conserve Ursaring. There's no reason to let it go down here on his Fake Out. And uh, now we will click uh, Will-O-Wisp. Because if he decides to switch out, then we are good. Um, and if he doesn't switch out, then I can go back into Ursaring after he knocks out my Jellicent and just get another knockout. Uh, and then Kirim comes in and just wins, so... Will-O-Wisp is going to go off. He is going to stay in on and go for a Psycho Cut, actually. Okay, interesting option. Uh, let's go for the Scald right here. Uh, we are able to knock out the Metacham with a Scald, which is impressive. And uh, now I'm going to let Kirim get the last kill because it's the only member that has not hit the field yet. Uh, we'll see if my opponent wants to forfeit. I would in his position because it's it's looking pretty grim with a uh, with an Ursa Ring and a, a Kirim Black against his uh, lonely Amoongus. So the Spike Stack ended up working out for us. Amoongus is going to come in. Kirim is going to be poisoned, but unless he has Protect, he's not stalling this out. I'm just going to go for Ice Beam, and this should be the end of the game. Uh, as he lives it and goes for a Sludge Bomb, and uh, the next Ice Beam will finish him off. So we're going to drop a GG for our opponent in the chat, and uh, we'll go for another Ice Beam right here. And again, like I said, unless he has like a bunch of Protects, this is, uh, and he hits all of them, <laughs> this game is over. So it was very nice on his part going for the Toxic Spikes. Uh, definitely scared me a little bit. Uh, and the fact that his Heatran had Flash Cannon also kind of threw me off. Because uh, it doesn't normally carry that. It's uh, Fire Move, Stealth Rocks, Taunt, and uh, Earth Power usually. Uh, but I guess on his team it makes sense not to run Earth Power because he does have the... Uh, he has the Landorus and he has the Metacham to break Steel types. So uh, He doesn't have a good Fire Switch in though. Like Tentacruel being the best one, but that thing gets worn down way too easily. So that is going to be a good game. And uh, let's move on to the second and final game. We're going to try to keep this short. No promises, guys. We are 16 minutes deep. And we get a pretty annoying looking team, to be perfectly honest. Uh, he does have a Rapid Spinner, but I do have a Spin Blocker. We will lead off here. What's his best lead against a Zelf? Would be Bisharp, right? We do have the Flamethrower, though, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and I can always set up Stealth Rocks on pretty much anything. So let's lead off with a Zelf anyway. I think that is the best lead. Uh, it's a speed tie between me and his Zelf, mine and his. Um, so taunt whoever wins the t uh, the uh, speed tie pretty much gets off free rocks. I think that's the uh, that's the idea. I could also lead with Aerodactyl and go for a Hone Claws into Wing Attack Pursuit, but we are just both going to lead with the Zelf. I'm going to try to win the speed tie here and go for the taunt. We'll see if it works out. If it doesn't, it's fine. He might also just U-turn if he's carrying it uh, into something that's faster, like a Scarf Mon, like uh, Excadrill. This team is a little bit weak to uh, Choice Scarf Excadrill, I would say, other than Aerodactyl, but, uh, I mean, of course, it, it loses to, uh, to Iron Head, but if he's locked into Earthquake is what I'm saying. I'm just gonna go for Rocks right here. He's gonna switch out into Stevie, the uh, Thunderous, which I'm assuming is Scarfed. So what I'm gonna do is click Flamethrower, uh, as he does bring in the Bisharp, which is perfect. We don't even have to have our Sash broken, and this Bisharp is gonna take a ton of damage. So that works out for us. Uh, I'm going to switch out here into Klefki because I don't have any reason to stay in. I'm going to conserve my, my Sash as he goes for the Sucker Punch. And uh, we're just going to go for the uh, for the Spikes right here. Get up a, a nice layer. He's going to go for Swords Dance. Uh, and I'm going to go for the Thunder Wave right now. I don't mind losing Klefki. Having this Spike up is kind of nice for the Excadrill and the uh, Suicune. That's the biggest things. Going to get off this Thunder Wave as he is uh, Lumberry actually. And goes for an Iron Head and crits us and knocks us out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I think that's alright. All I have to do here is just go into his elf, break my sash, which I could have done initially, but, you know. And we'll go for flamethrower on this turn, as uh, he's probably just going to sucker punch. I don't know what he thinks my last move is. It is indeed explosion, <laughs> as most of elf are. I did decide to run flamethrower because I thought that I was a little bit uh, scissor weak. I do have the jellicent, but that's about it. As we do get off the flamethrower, we're able to knock out the Bisharp right there. And we should be faster than the rest of his team, except his elf. Not factoring in scarfs, of course. So we will try to once again win the speed tie and go for a taunt. As we do not, can we win the following speed tie and go for an explosion is the question. 
as my opponent is going to switch out into Excadrill right here. It's going to take a little bit of damage, and we are going to go for the Explosion and knock it down extremely low to 39%. Now, I do not want this thing getting off a Rapid Spin on me at all, so Jellicent is my play. Despite the fact that Earthquake is going to hurt, uh, if he were to stay in here, Scald is definitely knocking him out. So I am just going to go for Scald. Uh, if Suicune switches in, that's absolutely fine. Azelf is actually going to choose to come in here. Take a Scald, take a nice 36%. Uh, if we can get the burn on the following one, that would be cool. Now, Azelf can't really do much to me. I'm going to go for a Recover as he goes for a Light Screen, actually. Oh, okay. I see you. Alright, so let's go for the Will-O-Wisp as he goes for the Taunt, okay? And what I'm going to do is, because he's Light Screen, um, I think I'm going to switch out into Ursaring here. He, he doesn't seem to have an attacking move. Yeah, he doesn't have an attacking move. We're going to go for the Reflect. We're not going to get the Burn. But the good news is that he cannot do anything to me. So, I just have to switch into something that actually threatens whatever comes in. And I think that's going to be Ursaring. Uh, on the Thunderous, actually. Okay. So, not the best. <laughs> not the worst, though. I think we will just go for Facade. We still have Scarf Kirim. Uh, so, we're not too bad. We're not in terrible shape. He does let the Azelf go down, which means no more screens for the rest of the game, which is really nice. Uh, if Excadrill comes in, I will just attack again, uh, because I expect a Rapid Spin from him. Uh, I don't expect a Rapid Spin, actually. I expect uh, an attack, so... Uh, well, I don't really have to make that play, because if he goes for Earthquake, then I can just bring in Aerodactyl and Pursue Trap him. And I don't really need Jellicent for anything else. So yeah, I can sack off Jellicent here. I don't have to make that play and overpredict. He's going to go for Iron Head as well, so that ends up working out for us. Uh, and we can just fire off a Will-O-Wisp right here as he's going to go for another Iron Head. Uh, we are stalling out the screens because he's flinching us. Uh, I'm going to go for another Willow here in case he switches out into uh, Thunderous so that it takes a little bit more damage. Or Suicune, either one is fine. And uh, Ursaring can definitely break Suicune. Like, he cannot stay in on me unless he has a boost up. Uh, as well, Kirim has uh, Max Attack Fusion Bolt, so that's always something to note. Gotta watch out for that Thunderous, don't want to let it get uh, any recovery. So that's where Ursaring is going to come in. Ursaring looking like a pretty powerful Wall Breaker right now. Very nice on the physical side. Both of our Wall Breakers are actually physical, if you guys didn't notice. Uh, all three of them, I guess you could say, because if you want to count Mega Aerodactyl in there. Um, now... The thing is, his Thunderous can never lock itself into, like, an electric move, or Kirim's just gonna come in and knock it out. He's gonna go for another Iron Head right now. Uh, I'm gonna get off a Will-O-Wisp, which is amazing, as now we will attempt to click Recover. And, uh, if the Suicune comes in, then that's fine. He's actually gonna go into Thunderous, which, unless it's Choice Spec, shouldn't knock me out, and we already see that it's Leftovers. So, I'm just gonna go for a Will-O-Wisp. So now we know he's not Scarfed, which is really nice. He's not able to, to take us out with that. We are gonna go for the Will-O-Wisp. And uh, I think I'm actually going to conserve Jellicent right here. Uh, and just go out into Aerodactyl after. Because Jellicent still lives rocks, and we pretty much have confirmation that his Excadrill is Choice Scarfed. He went for repeated Iron Heads. So now I have to choose something to sack off here. Um... Actually, no. Hold on. Let me calc something. Uh, Excadrill. Choice Scarf versus Jellicent. I just want to see how much he's been doing to me. Uh, are you utility? I want max defense here. Is that our set? Actually, let me just bring up my custom set because I imported everything. Custom set, 244. Okay. Iron Head doing 15 to 17 from a Jolly nature. How much was he doing to us? 15 to 17. Okay, so he is Jolly, so I can't play around with that. Um, because I was thinking maybe Kyurem can outspeed him, but that's not the case, actually. Now, I really do want to keep this thing. The thing is, if I lose Kyurem, then... I guess Arrow can come in and just knock this thing out, right? It's not too big a deal. If I go Kirim, well, the thing is, Kirim's not going to die to a Thunderbolt anyway, right? So yeah, let's just go Kirim, and we'll click Outrage after he clicks T-Bolt. As he does, does he get the Para? He does not. Awesome. So we are Choice Scarfed. Uh, we are going to click Outrage right here. Uh, I'm expecting him to expect me to be special or slow. Uh, he doesn't see an item. I could be Life Orb, so he might just want to go for a Focus Blast. I'm just going to go straight for the Outrage. 
and uh, nothing on his team is going to appreciate this. This is a max attack, Adamant Outrage. It's 476 attack. Everything is dead. Everything is dead. Now, there's one little problem here, which is that if I let his Excadrill come in as I'm outraging, I can't switch out to Jellicent. So maybe my better play is just to go for the Ice Beam here. Uh, Because do I really care if Suicune comes in? That is the question. Because if it's Crocoon, it doesn't do anything to Jellicent and I can recover up on it. And then this thing has to come back in on rocks again and it's burned. So yeah, I'm going to go for Ice Beam actually. Because that prevents his uh, his Excadrill from being able to spin. It also knocks out the Charizard, which would have been knocked out anyway by Outrage. But uh, if his Suicune comes in, I am going straight into Jellicent, not even thinking about it. He's going to bring in his Excadrill, which I thought was a little bit higher than that actually, guys. I'm having problems with Showdown and I can't see all the percentages. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I can see the ones on like the right side or some of them. Uh, two of them to be specific, but I can't see the other four, so this is really weird. Uh, I'm just gonna go for another Ice Beam right here, should be able to knock out the Charizard, as it is not actually. He goes for the Dragon Dance, and that might be the downfall of us. Uh, Arrow might be able to take one, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we're just gonna go for another Ice Beam here, he's gonna go for the Dragon Claw and knock us out. I wish I had some sort of priority, but I don't. Uh, Clef Key is gone, I can't Thunder Wave this thing. So I have to rely on Mega Aerodactyl taking a plus one Dragon Claw from a Zard X. Charizard X uh, Dragon Dance versus Arrow. Can I take it? Uh, Dragon Claw. No way. It knocks me out even when I'm not at plus one. <laughs> Does Ursaring get knocked out? It should, right? Ursaring. Uh, yeah, Ursaring gets destroyed too. Wow. That's crazy. All right. So we're going to go into Ursaring. We do lose this one, unfortunately. He is just going to spam Dragon Claw against me, I'm sure. Um, I, I, Aerodactyl's not outspeeding this thing at plus one. Never, even if it's min speed. Like, there's no possible way it's outspeeding. Uh, Jellicent would have been able to uh, stall out the Suicune. Not stall it out, but um, taunt it and whatnot. Force it to Scald repeatedly. Uh, and when it's taunted, it has to do that. So it would have been giving me recovery for free. And, uh, yeah, so... Dragon Claw is going to finish us off there. I kind of... Uh, what's wrong with this this Kirin, man? Why didn't it knock it out? It's only got 76 EVs. That's what happened. That's What was the roll on that? Let me just see. Kirin Black, custom set. Ice Beam is doing 46 to 55. So it was a roll in my favor. And I actually got a min roll. Surprisingly enough. Uh, we're going to go into Arrow here. It doesn't matter what we click. He's knocking us out. We're going to go for Wing Attack. And this game is pretty much over, so... Unfortunately, we are not able to secure that one. Um, Outrage would have prevented him from being able to do that. I thought his Excadrill was at a higher HP. That's why I made that play. Uh, but that is going to be GG to my opponent. And uh, I still really like the team. And I think this team is really going to work out for Rob. He has a lot of great synergy on it. Um, and I'm looking forward to what he can do with it. Yes, he, he still hasn't played one game yet. I don't believe so. Uh, so I'm really excited for that, and uh, hopefully he uploads to his channel. I don't know if he's got his PC back yet. Uh, something happened with it, and he wasn't able to uh, upload anymore, so that's unfortunate. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Again, like I said at the beginning of the episode, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And that's going to be it. Catch you guys later. Ciao.